What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again today bringing you guys another episode of my Madden 15 Ultimate Team wish list. And today, what we're going to be talking about are the top five ways that I can think of that Madden 15 Ultimate Team can make some improvements specifically to the gameplay and kind of the features that go along specifically with the gameplay. Now, if you're new to the series, please understand that I don't have any inside information about what EA is doing to this game, uh, whether it be new features or anything like that. I have no idea. All that I can go off of is based on the information that I've been given that's public and what I've seen in the previous games as well. Specifically, we're talking about Madden 25 and some of the ways that uh, the head-to-head -head gameplay was kind of a little bit weird and... Um, you know, just some things like that that I think needs to be improved before we get to Mutt 15 because this game is right on the verge of being just an absolute monster here in the United States. Uh, I'm not sure that it's ever going to be a worldwide sensation, but football is still king here in America and I don't see any reason that it's going to change at all. So what I want to see is ways that this game can be improved to make it so that there are more people that end up playing Madden 15 and specifically Madden 15 Ultimate Team. So with that being said guys, I want to get in just a little bit in detail about some of the improvements that I'd like to see this game make. Now the first thing that I want to see is actually something that I think some people are going to agree with me on and some people are going to disagree with me on. Now if you've played a lot of Madden Ultimate Team over the past few years, you probably are aware that one of the big issues that this game franchise has is that there are just too many of the top cards. Madden 13, for example, when that was out, you guys remember how many ridiculous 99 overall cards there were? There were like the one star 99 and the two star 99 and the three star 99 cards of players. It got to just be ridiculous to the point where Basically, all of the cards that were coming out at a certain point were all 99 overall, and they all had just insane attributes. They were all 100 overall at practically everything, and it just was ridiculous. And I think that they made some improvements to Madden 15 in this area because we actually don't see quite as many of those cards. But now that we've got the golden tickets and all these ultimate legends and things, you know, when you compare the 99 overall standard legend Lawrence Taylor card to the ultimate legend Lawrence Taylor card, there's just no comparison. And it's almost at the point where they're unrealistic because Lawrence Taylor, although he was a great overall player, was never great in pass coverage. But in order to make him so much better than what his regular legend card is, they had to boost him somewhere. So what they did was they gave him faster speed and they gave him actually some decent passing attributes, uh, at least in coverage. So it was really kind of weird to me and it's kind of frustrating to me because the first ultimate team that I actually ever played was FIFA. And I never really got too into it, but I played a little bit of it. And it was so much fun to me because I was able to put together a team of cards that were like 80s and 90s overall. Uh, low 90s, low, low 90s, if I got any 90s. And it was mostly like, seriously, 70s, 80s, 90s. And I, I don't think I ever got a card that was more than like a 92 overall. And still, it was a lot of fun. And, and we're talking about the best players in the game in FIFA. Ronaldo, Messi, um, you know, Ian Robin, and cards like that, they're not 99 overall still. They're the best cards in the game, but they're not 99 overall. They're not ridiculously overpowered. So what you actually see is a lot more cards that are like 50 overall, and 60 overall, and 70 overall, whereas the top guys kind of max out around like 95 overall. And while I know a lot of people really love the fact that they can have an all 99 team in Madden and you know at this point practically everybody's got an all 99 team when you get into these higher divisions, it, it's just kind of boring. It's It really is. It's just kind of boring when everybody that you play has an all 99 squad and it's just a matter of well how good is their 99 overall squad? Is it just legends or is it ultimate legends? And Is it golden tickets or is it just elite cards? Well, you know, come on guys, seriously, wouldn't it be more fun if we had kind of a bigger variety, kind of a bigger gap between the really good cards and the mediocre cards? Wouldn't it be more exciting then if you got one of the really good cards versus now it's like, well, I practically need to get an ultimate legend card to play every position, otherwise I'm going to be at a huge disadvantage. Just a thought, 
I think personally that I would love to see less 99 overall cards. I just think that it would be a more fun opportunity for all of us and it would make for a more competitive environment in Madden and it would again make for more fun when you do get one of those ridiculously good cards. Second thing that I want to see improved is that we have a major issue with the actual mechanics of the game. And for those of you who have played a lot of head-to-head -head seasons games and you played against friends and things like that, you're probably aware of this at this point. And you should be, frankly, if you played the game a decent amount. Pretty much everybody that I see has only one quarterback in their lineup. And the reason for that is because there's a glitch where your quarterback basically cannot get injured. So what happens is that you can get injured on the field. It field. It'll show you getting knocked down. It'll show you getting removed from the game even. But what happens is that your player just walks back onto the field like nothing happened because you don't have any other quarterbacks on the roster. So what it does is it defaults to putting the only other guy that can potentially play that position, which is the one quarterback on your roster that you have, and he's automatically your quarterback no matter what you do. So it's kind of uh, it's kind of an interesting error, and it's something that I'm really baffled that they did. In my opinion, if your quarterback gets injured and you've only got one quarterback on your roster, guess what? You have to go to your kickers and punters because that's kind of what the default used to be in Madden back in the day. If you had, for some reason, all three of your quarterbacks got injured, you had to put in a kicker or a punter as your quarterback. Now, obviously, we need to make it so that you can put enough quarterbacks on your roster, three of them, so that you don't really have that happen. And it really would very, very, very rarely happen where you would get uh, all three quarterbacks injured. But at the same time, though, I want to be able to knock a quarterback out of the game. If they're running around with Johnny Manziel and I smash him with Lawrence Taylor and knock him down and he's injured, why is he not out for the rest of the game? It just makes sense, and I think that it's something that needs to be fixed going forward. It is a major issue at this point because you can injure other players, but you can't injure quarterbacks. So, with that being said, I want to see that improved, and let's move on to the next thing, which is actually the attribute boosts. So, in Madden 25, we got to see some interesting cards. It started off with the Combine cards, I believe. I think they were the first ones that were really utilizing these attribute boosts. And really what it comes down to is that your player, when you put them into your starting lineup, can have things such as plus two speed or plus two strength, or in the Ultimate Legend player's case is plus three in some of these areas, or even plus five in some of these areas. And basically what it does is it takes your entire team and improves them in that area as long as that player is on the field. So for example, the Barry Sanders Ultimate Legend card that came out about a week ago now, that card is actually gonna give plus five to every player's speed on your entire offense when it's on the field. That's absolutely ridiculous. I use these cards because I have to. Because if I don't use them, I know other people are going to be using them against me and, I'm, and I can't compete. Because when you see guys that have these plus five speed cards, and then there's the plus two speed coach, Jim Schwartz, well, he's basically adding plus two speed to your entire team, no matter who's on the field. Well, you might have a plus five Barry Sanders and a plus two, let's say, Trendon Holiday. And, you know, there's a bunch of different one, ones of these that add up. And when you start to get plus nine speed for your entire offense or your entire defense, if you've got Patrick Petersons and cards like that, it's ridiculous. There's, there's absolutely no way that an entire team should have plus nine speed. That's insane. Think about the difference in speed between a, a running back that's 90 speed versus a running back that's 100 speed for your team. Yeah, that's the difference basically for the entire team when you've got these massive uh, speed boosts or the particular one that bothers me. But again, like it's the one that I have to use. So I just, I don't see a whole lot of reason to have those in the game. It really doesn't make any sense. Why would having a player on my team like uh, Chris Johnson, let's say my combine Chris Johnson card that I like to use, why would having him on the field improve the speed of my tight end Donald Penn card or my Alshon Jeffrey wide receiver card? That makes absolutely no sense. Why would him being on the field make anyone else faster? It just makes no sense whatsoever. I don't see even why they implemented it. Um, like I said, the only reason that I use it is because I pretty much have to. So I hope that they get rid of that. I, it kind of sounds 
from what I've heard in rumors that that's something that they're probably going to do. But at the same time, I, I don't hear any, you know, confirmation on this from anybody. So who knows? We might see a plus 10 speed boost player in next year's Madden. And if that happens, guys, all bets are off at that point because everybody's just going to be boosting with these cards. And, and it basically makes the other cards completely unusable because they don't have these ridiculous attribute boosts. Next thing, and this one is entirely based off of kind of the gameplay footage that I've seen, and we, I guess, it, I think it's been confirmed at this point that in next year's Madden, you will be able to actually see the play art from the play that your opponent previously ran. I don't know who decided to do this. <laughs> But this is a terrible idea, and I understand the reason for it. The reason is because they want to help people when they're getting cheesed with the same play over and over and over again. But just purely seeing the play art from the previous play do doesn't really help that much. At least it shouldn't help that much. If you can't tell that a guy's running to the right, okay, well then you're terrible. Seriously, you can't tell where they're even going on the field. You, you're that bad at the game, I guess. I mean, when I see somebody and they run a play, I might not know exactly what every single player on the field did, but for the most part, I'm going to know where he threw the ball if it was a pass or where he ran if it was a run. And on defense, I'm typically going to be able to tell if he was running man coverage or zone coverage. And not only that, but what happens if after I pick a play, I go in on defense and I manually... Uh, change my players what they're doing on, on defense. I make an, an audible, for example. I take my defensive end and put him in a, in a quarterback spot. Is it going to show that? Because if so, you're just telling them exactly what I'm doing to stop their offense, which is kind of the point of playing defense. Madden is already hard enough on defense. It's already ridiculous to try and stop somebody, and they're going to make it even harder? I don't get it. I really, really don't. So I just really would love to see them not include this, at least when we're playing like head-to-head -head seasons or something like that. I, When it's competitive like that, when you're playing for a prize, in this case coins, when you're playing for a prize, you should be able to figure out what the opposing team is doing. And if they're running the same play over and over and over again on you, seeing the play art isn't really going to help you that much. You need to be able to make the adjustment manually. You need to be able to spy what they're doing, figure it out, and make an adjustment. That's part of playing football. That's part of playing video games. And to me, they're taking away the competitive nature of video games. And that's really bothersome to me. I don't like it. I don't want to see this implemented, like I said, in any sort of competitive game modes like Ultimate Team. If we're playing a friendly game, okay, fine. Implement it because I might need help against a, a friend. And I should be able to turn it on and off. But... I shouldn't have to play against somebody that's going to be able to see every play that I run. That's ridiculous. I don't like it. And uh, I think it's going to lead to more problems than it is going to solve those problems with people running the same cheese plays over and over again. I think people are still going to run those same cheese plays. It's just you're not going to be able to you're going to be able to see what they're doing and still not going to be able to stop it. So that's going to be even more frustrating. So next thing. And this is the last one, but I think it's also probably the funnest one. And this is an idea that I came up with to make solo challenges better. Because right now, for most of us, when we play solo challenges, it's basically just a matter of um, finding the time to play. It's not really a matter of can I beat the computer, because if you can't beat the computer at this point, God bless you. But... Uh, you know, you should pretty much be able to beat the computer on any difficulty level with a team that's 85 overall or above. Um, you know, if, you've, if you're just getting started and you're playing in an all Madden one, okay, I understand. I, I understand why you wouldn't be able to, <laughs> to beat the computer. But when you're going up against uh, an, a 99 overall team, even still, you should be able to easily win. And what I decided to implement here, or, or suggest as an implementation, is some sort of way to make things a little bit more entertaining for us when we're kicking the computer's ass. So what I came up with was this concept that I'm going to call the Wheel of Fortune. And basically what it is is that when the game starts and it's a solo challenge, it's going to actually like roll through a series of different positions, okay? So it's going to say on offense, for example, um, get it's going to pick the offensive position. It might be a, it's going to either be quarterback, running back, wide receiver, or tight end. 
And let's say, for example, that it chose running back, and this is going to be randomly selected. So it might say running back, and then your goal for the game is to get 150 yards running with one player. So what you have to do then in that game in order to get like a little special bonus of coins, like an extra thousand coins or something like that, is that you need to get 150 yards rushing. So it would be kind of cool, I think, to be able to challenge you a little bit to do something more than what you normally do in your games. Because if you're me, you pretty much run outside zone every single play, run out the clock, and then get out of the game as quickly as possible. Whereas if there was like some sort of thing where I could get more coins if I accomplish a certain task in the game, I think I would be enticed to do that. And it would make the challenge a lot more fun, a lot more challenging, and uh, just it would keep things a little bit more fresh, I think, than it currently is at. Uh, in terms of the the solo challenges at the moment so with that being said guys I want to hear what you guys have to say about some of these uh, game suggestions that I made in this video if you like them make sure you press the like button below if you have questions of course leave them in the comment section and I like I said I want to hear your feedback on it so please leave comments on that as well if you're new to my channel also make sure you press that subscribe button I've got a ton of different styles of uh, videos that I'm doing we're doing a budget series we're still doing like things like this like the wish list for next year's Madden and then I've got a series that people seem to really like which is called pink slips where you guys have the opportunity to play against me and if you beat me you get a really kick-ass card and you don't risk anything I just have a whole bunch of different stuff that I think you guys would like if you press that subscribe button so please do thank you guys so much for watching I really do appreciate it and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon